Hey guys, how you doing? It's the Honeydew Carpenter. I've been getting a lot of questions about the foam mate and its operation and the air pressure and the foaming agent solution ratios and the Portland cement to water ratios and the ratio between the foam and the Portland cement. And so I thought I'd do a quick tutorial video. I'm just going to go through what I do and why I do it and what I think is the best foaming solution. Um, this is the air compressor that I use. Uh, it's as old as the heels. I got it from my dad when he passed away in 2004. And you can see there's some new parts on it. I just keep repairing it. It's got a regulator on it. And it just goes, the regulator is over here on this side. Um, the thing about the foam aid is you can regulate it clear down to like 40 pounds and run it really slow and it still creates a good high quality foam or you can run it really fast and make foam very quickly. So this compressor is old. A small um, more efficient pancake compressor would be more than sufficient to run a, uh, a foam mate. This is the soap solution that I use, the foaming agent. It is just a concentrated hand soap. And when I say concentrated, I mean it, it look how slow that bubble goes up. It's thick. Um, if I use a concentrated soap like this, uh, you know, you can get this at Sam's Club, um, uh, just an orange hand soap, like a dial or whatever. But uh, if I use a concentrated soap like this, I just do it 40 to 1, meaning one ounce of this to 40 ounces of water, and that'll be my solution. Um, Portland cement, if you're using a 94-pound bag, you're going to want to mix 6 gallons of water with it. Well, six gallons of water is 768 ounces, and when you divide it into the 94, that equates to just 8.1 ounces per pound of um, Portland cement. So, I'm the first thing I do when I get ready to do a project <clears throat> is I prep my form. Now, I'm just going to make a brick today for demonstration purposes, and so I have made this little form. It's similar. It is the exact form I made in my earlier videos. I'm just going to set that aside. Um, I like to spray it down with a little bit of uh, vegetable oil and let that get good and soaked in. Um, they have different uh, oil solutions for commercial concrete if you're doing a big project that you can use to spray your forms with. But I, I just use this for this small stuff. So there you go. I just, you know, sprayed a little oil in it. We're good to go. Now I set that aside. I got my scale here. And so what I'm going to do is go ahead and put the right amount of water in for the amount of Portland cement that I'm going to use. Just making a small brick. I'm only going to use five pounds of Portland cement. So 8.1 ounces times five, that's 40.5 ounces. So about oh, 40 and a quarter, 40 and three eighths ounces. So I'm going to tear the scale out and I am going to dump that amount of water into this bottle. 40.5 ounces is about two pounds, two and a half pounds, and just three eighths of an ounce. So that's what I'll put in here. Seven, eight, and three eighths ounces. That's perfect. So I'm right at <clears throat> the exact amount of water that I need for five pounds of Portland cement. So now I'm going to go ahead and set that aside. 
but the ratios are very important so there you go it's 8.1 ounces uh, per pound of Portland cement is the same equivalence as six gallons to a 94 pound bag okay I got my gloves on now that's kind of important because like I said Portland cement will dry out your hands bad Okay, and I'll just put five pounds of Portland cement in there. Five pounds of Portland cement. And this is our water that's going to be mixed with it. So I'm just going to set those aside now. Now we're going to make our foaming solution. I'm only going to do 40 ounces because I'm not going to make that much foam. So I'll just do one ounce of uh, concentrated soap. Okay. There we go. And now we're going to need 40 ounces of water. So the total we'll have is 41 ounces. which is two pounds uh, well it's yeah two and a half pounds I'll tell you what Don mixes in a little bit quicker but it doesn't make quite as good as you see it sticks to the bottom it's a lot heavier and more concentrate it takes a little bit more swishing it around to make sure it's all dissolved into your water so I take my exactly my five pounds of uh, because I'm just making a small batch my five pounds of Portland cement we had set aside the exact amount of water that we needed I just use a corkscrew mixer and it seems to work just fine dump our water in this is exactly the four the 40 ounces and I think it was 40 and 5 eighths ounces of water and I'll just mix this slurry up and I'll just kind of show you what the mix looks like, the consistency of it. So, it's just, it's not very thick, it, it's more like a syrup almost. See how it, how it goes. Okay guys, I like to take just a marker and mark on my bucket right where the level of the slurry is and then I'll just mark double that amount up because we just want to maybe two times double our volume maybe a little more than double but it'll be about right there so when you're putting your foam in you'll know when to stop putting it in now, I'm going to grab my foam mate, the original, the very first one ever made, and our solution, you can see, it's kind of got that orange hue color to it, it, it stayed mixed, and I'll just make sure my valves are completely closed. And I'm not going to be making very much foam, so I might not dump all this solution in there. Oh. Yeah, there we go. Like I said, I'm not going to use all the solution, but I'll dump enough in. And I'll just stick the lid on it. And 
I'll hook it up to my uh, compressor. And I have my, first you start the air, first you start the air going all by itself. It might be blowing a little bit of just old foam from some residual that was left in the gun, but I'll leave it about like that. I'm, I don't want a ton of air going on. You turn on your uh, your soap valve to let some soap come in, and I leave the gun outside of it. You can see the soap going through, and it's gonna. You see it immediately start making the foam. And you see how thick that is. You see how thick that is. That's what you want. So I'll just put enough in there to double my volume. Sorry about the compressor, guys. Sorry, guys. I didn't mean for the compressor to go off right in the middle of filming, but oh well. Now just so you know guys, it's kind of a hurry up process. Um, that had already kind of started to set up, that slurry in the bottom. And uh, so you want to do this really quickly and have it all ready to go. So as soon as you've got your slurry mixed, you can start pumping foam in right away. That's what it looks like. Okay. So now, um, make my brick of air creek. Just kind of. Hey guys, I hope that video was helpful, and I hope some of the information you got from it was helpful. I've got a bunch of projects that I'm going to be doing here in the very near future. Um, I have a foam mate that I've been working on for a client and the reason I was just going to show it to you was just to let you, all you guys know that bought them out there that uh, um, these valves, if they don't have the round handle and they have these, that's fine. I tested them, they're great valves. I actually would am going to put some of these on mine because I prefer them because you can tell kind of where it is uh, instead of just the little teeny marks you can barely read on the um, round handles. That being said guys, I got a lot more uh, air creep projects coming. Um, I'm thinking about doing kind of a miniature of a, uh, a pretty large backyard shed but I'm just going to do a miniature model of it where I'm going to just take some uh, three-quarter inch PVC and dome it over in a loop and uh, attach some miniature forms to it and what it'll be is I'll be able to pour the first foot on both sides and then let it cure and then pop the forms off and move them up and pour the next foot and move them up and uh, I just want to kind of do a test and do a miniature uh, shed because I want to do this spring. I'm kind of limited with weather. I'm in the Rocky Mountains up in Idaho and just a couple weeks ago we got dumped on eight inches of snow and it's pretty cold. It's not the best um, environment for the air creek to be curing in. So stay tuned. I hope that was helpful for you. Uh, be sure and 
like and subscribe click the bell for notifications and uh, you know if you haven't seen the full aircrete video on this and are just pressed on this tutorial go ahead and watch the uh, aircrete video as well and after you get through watching it you can go ahead and click the links below in it and that's another important thing a lot of people have had a lot of questions that actually could be answered by clicking the links you click the links and it gives great examples of a lot of different projects that have been done with aircrete so good luck guys appreciate you